Welcome back class, class is in session. This video is all about bit changes and taking the fear and uncertainty right out of doing them. Uh, if you think about it on a simple form, running a bit change project is kind of like running two jobs just back to back. You put your bit in, you run your job, you change your bit, you run your job. So it's really not as scary as you think it is. I'm not gonna focus on the feeds and the speeds that we're using for the bits because that's not really an important part of a bit change process. Uh, I am going to focus on the part of the process that will make bit changes easy to understand. First things first, a quick overview of the process theory. Step one, we're gonna create the tool paths in whatever CAD CAM software you're using. In my case, it's gonna be vCarve. Step two, you're going to save a tool path for every bit being used into a G-code file in your CAD CAM software. Step three, you're going to open whatever sending software you're using, in my case, G-Sender, and load the first uh, G-code file that you've saved. Step four, you are going to secure your material to your waste board. Step five, you are going to mount the router bit that corresponds to that first G-code file that you just loaded. Step six, you're going to zero out the bit that you just put in your router. In my case, I'm using the auto zero touch plate, but whatever method you use, you're gonna have to zero out your bit. Step seven, run that first G-code file. Step eight, when the first file is done running, you're going to turn off your router. And in a one bit job, typically speaking, this is where you would be done the process. However, you're doing a bit change project. So you are going to do step nine and load your second G code file now. Step 10, you are going to change to your second bit that corresponds with your second G code file. Step 11, you are going to re-zero just your Z axis. You already found your X and your Y in step six. All you have to do is find Z with that new bit. Step 12, run your second G code file. And step 13, if you are using more than two bits for a particular job, you just repeat steps nine through 11 again and again until you're done your job. Now that we've gone through the process, we're gonna bounce over into vCarve and we're gonna like show you how to set this up for reals. We're over in vCarve now and you can see that I have three different tool path shapes drawn here to represent three different bits that I'm going to save G code files for. The circle in the middle is gonna have a ball nose added to it. The triangle will have a V bit and the square on the outside will have an end mill. Now we're just going to add the bits to the tool path. So we're going to select our circle. It doesn't matter what toolpath operation you're using. It can be anything. So for this one, we'll just make it a pocket. The ball nose is already in there. We're going to name it number one and we'll call it circle just so we keep things good. And we'll call this ball nose. One bit assigned to one toolpath. Calculate. There we go, and we can even preview it if we want to. There we go, close this out, go back to our 2D view. Our V bit for the triangle is going to get an actual V carve toolpath. It already has a V bit in there, and we are going to call this two. We're gonna call this triangle, triangle, and we are going to, what is this? This is a V bit, there we go. We'll make it a regular profile toolpath for the square. It already has, it does not, it lied. That's all right, we'll throw an end mill on there selected. Again, doesn't matter the size or any of that stuff. Doesn't matter any of that. We're not talking tools and we're going to call this three square and we're going to hit calculate and we're going to preview just so you can see what's going on. There we go. So we have three tool paths with three bits assigned to them. Aces. A quick word on um, tool path or file order. Uh, it is going to completely depend on the type of job that you are running. So just keep this in mind when you're creating and naming and saving your tool paths so that they run in the order that you want them to or that they need to run in. Once you have assigned each bit to its tool path, now it's time to save the actual G code files um, for each one. So you go over here, my mouse is hiding on me. There it is. So you're gonna go over here, you're gonna close out of this section and you're just gonna go over into this lovely little save button. I typically use the visible tool paths to one file because it just works for every situation that I've come across so far, but you can feel free to experiment if you want to. Keeping in mind uh, also, while we aren't showing it here, you can save multiple like bits to the same file, right? So if two, if two or three of these files were vbit files and you wanted them to run in that order, you could save them in one G code file instead of multiple. In this case, however, because we have different bits, if you try to select, haha, there it is. If you try and select two tool paths with two different bits, you're gonna get this error in vCarve that says, you are not allowed to do that. Go and deselect one of them. Then you are going to, obviously you have your visible, you have your tool path selected. You're going to hit save tool paths. This is the folder where I want it to be. It is the first, the circle, and it's the ball nose. So we're gonna hit save. We're going to repeat the process for the other two files and we'll be off and running. Save tool path, save. 
And then last but not least, the square, the end mill, and save. So congrats! You have completed the first two steps to creating your bit change project. Next, we are going to fire up gsender and load some of these gcode files that we just saved. Once you've loaded gsender and it's opened, you're going to want to go up and connect to your machine. Clicky clicky, it is happy. And you're just going to load that first gcode file that we created back in vcarve. Open. First gcode file loaded. Next, we're going to go over to the physical side of things and, you know, keep the process going. The first thing you're going to want to do after you've loaded your first G-code file is to secure your material to your wasteboard uh, using your chosen work hold method. In my case, I'm just going to use some CA glue and painter's tape. After you've got your material mounted to your wasteboard, the next thing you're going to want to do is grab that first bit that corresponds with your first G-code file. It is the quarter inch ball nose. Ta -da. You're just going to want to mount that into your router. Doop, doop, doop. There we go. Lock it down. Once you have your router bit mounted, you're going to want to zero your bit. I'm using the auto zero touch plate in this particular case, but you zero your bit with whatever method you would typically use. One little quick tip that might come in useful, I typically have some sort of cloth when I am putting my bits in just in case they happen to drop out. It saves them from getting dinged and damaged and, you know, extends the life a little bit. Once you have your router bit zeroed, now it's time to run that very first G-code file. So put on your disk collection, fire up your router, and hit start job. So typically speaking for a one-bit job, it finishes carving, you turn off your router, you disconnect your disk collection, and you're done your job. But wait, you're going to do a bit change project, which requires Ironically enough, a bit change. So you're going to load up your second G code file in gsender. This is probably the scary part for most people because they kind of get in their own heads. But if you think about it, like I said earlier, this is just like running two jobs back to back. So that's all we're going to do. The only difference is we're only going to re-zero our Z axis once we've changed our bit. So now we're going to change over to our second bit that corresponds with our second G code file. In this case, it's a V bit. got your second bit loaded and now we're just going to re-zero our Z. So whatever method you want to use to re-zero Z, you go for it. For the auto zero touch plate, there's this handy dandy little tab right here when you flip it over where all you have to do is slide it on your piece of material or on your material. If you're going to go over into G-Sender, you're going to have to move your bit down just a little bit. If it's too high, it will error out when it's trying to auto detect it. Move it down. You are now selected on Z only instead of XYZ. You're going to hit probe. You're going to touch the touch plate to your bit. And then you're going to hit start probe. And that's it. You re-zeroed your second bit. You've got your second file loaded. Time to let her in. The second job is finished, you've turned your router off. So just like we did for the first bit change, we're just going to repeat the process. I'm going to put my little towel down to keep my bit from getting dinged. I usually catch it with my hand, but just in case, right? There we go. 
Quick handy tip here, you may find while doing bit change projects that sometimes you have to raise your Z height uh, in order to take the old bit out or to put the new one in. Sometimes they're longer and shorter. That's totally okay to do. You're going to re-zero your Z once you have the new bit in your router anyways. So it doesn't matter if you raise your Z temporarily, we're gonna reset that and you'll keep running. And for our final bit, like we did in our VCAR file, we are going to be messing with a lovely little quarter inch end mill. Ta-da! Same as we've already done. Mm -mm. You've got your third bit mounted in your router. You've opened up your third G code file in G Sender. And now we're just going to do the process again. We're going to take our Auto Zero touch plate. We're going to line it up right there. We're going to make sure that our magnet is on our collet. And again, we are just going to re zero our Z right there. Probe, make sure we touchy. And then. Start probe. So there you have it. That's it. It's not that scary. Is there a process to follow? Absolutely. But once you've done it a few times, it's just going to be another tool in your toolbox. So what are you waiting for? Get out there, change those bits, and make something cool. School's out!